everyone. Welcome to my class. So today we're going to discuss the topic under statistics for engineers 2, scatter diagram and correlation. Now let's start with the scatter diagram. So it is a graphical tool that attempts to depict the influence of one variable to another. So scatter diagram is composed of a horizontal axis containing the measured values of one variable and a vertical axis representing the measurement of the other variable. So in order for us to have a scatter diagram, we have two variables by which we will depict or know, determine the relationship of one variable to the second variable. Now the information in a scatter diagram that we can get, so first one, so visually, we can look for patterns that indicate the two variables are related. Second one, if they are related, we can see what kind of line or estimating equations describes this relationship. Now we have here an example of a scatter diagram. So on the left figure, the horizontal axis is the weight and the vertical axis is the height. So this is the, the blue dots or the blue points here are the plots for the data about the relationship of weight and the height. Okay. Then on the second figure, we have temperature as the horizontal axis and the sales for the vertical axis. So we have here some plots and it is uh, close to a line. Okay. So you can see that it is linearly related. So correlation, it is a statistical measure that expresses the extent to which two variables are linearly related. So meaning they change together at a constant rate. Correlation explores linear association. So that's why on the graph a while ago, we have a line showing a linear relationship between the temperature and the sales okay so but it does not necessarily imply a cause and effect relationship so example we have two machines measuring same type of parts the number of traffic fatalities versus number of speeding cars so this um, scatter diagram and correlation can actually use in in different kind of parameters to determine the relationship between two variables. So these two are just some of the examples. We have a formula to know the degree of correlation between the two variables. So R is equal to the summation of the product of X minus X bar and Y minus Y bar. All over the square root of the summation of the square of x minus x bar and the summation of the square of the y minus y bar. So take note, the x bar here is the average of all the x data. Well, the y, y bar, that is the average or mean of all the data in y. So x and y here are the two variables or the values of the two variables that we, we will test. So coefficient of correlation, it is also known as the person's product moment measure, the strength of relationship between the response Y and the predictor X. So properties of correlation, it is denoted by R, measure of the degree to which a linear relationship exists between X and Y. We have properties of R. So the range of R is negative 1, so less than or equal to R and less than or equal to the positive 1. So if we have R is equal to 1, it only implies a perfect linear relationship, okay? perfect positive correlation. Now if we have R equal to negative 1, so that is perfect negative correlation. And lastly, if we have R is equal to 0, so it only implies that there is no linear relationship between the two variables, but it does not imply no relationship at all. So um, the relationship between two variables, uh, it, cannot, it can actually be uh, no, 
nonlinear like exponential or logarithmic. Okay, so this correlation here or the R here denotes a linear relationship. So having R equal to zero implies uh, does not imply that there is no relationship between the two variables. So rule of thumb for R, so we have a table for the correlation coefficient. So, if we have size of correlation between uh, 0.9 to 1.0, or if it is negative, so negative 0 0.9 to negative 1.0, so it means very high positive or negative correlation. If we have 0 0.7 to 0 0.9, so that is high positive or negative correlation. 0.5 to 0.7, moderate. 0.3 to 0.5 is low, positive, or negative. And 0 to 0 0.3 is little, if any, correlation. Now, let's have some example. So, we have here uh, on the X column, the number of days. Or maybe this is day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, day 6, and day 7. And for the Y, so we have here the sales for that particular day. Okay, so first thing that we need to do is to find the X bar and Y bar. So X bar is the average or the mean of all the x. So all you have to do here is just add. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 divided by the n or how many uh, numbers we have here. So we have 7. So summation of all this data divided by 7, we have x bar is equal to 4. Then same case with the y bar. So, all you have to do is just to get the sum of all these numbers and then divide them by 7. So, we will have y bar is equal to 176.6. Now, on the third column, okay, so we will have to compute for the x minus x bar. So, our x is the uh, per column, we will compute for x minus x bar. So, our x here is 1 minus 4. So, we have negative 3. Then, 2 minus 4, negative 2. 3 minus 4, negative 1. 4 minus 4, 0. 5 minus 4, 1. 6 minus 4, 2. 7 minus 4, 3. Okay, so that's... That's how you do the x minus x bar. And same procedure with the y minus y bar. So, we will consider the column for the sales. So, 220 minus the average, which is 176.6. We'll have 43.43. For the second row, negative 26.57, 43.43. So, in this case... Um, it's better if you will join me in solving this problem so that you can practice how to do the x minus x bar, the y minus y bar, and of course how you do the rest of the computation. No? So for the fourth, we have negative 66.57, negative 61.57, 24.43, and 43.43. Now next step, we need the square of the x minus x bar and the square of the y minus y bar. So, negative 3 squared, we have 9. Okay, then we will square the rest of the values. Then, after getting the, the x minus x bar squared, so let's square the y minus y bar. Again. Then, the product of x minus x bar and y minus y bar. So, these two columns here, the third and the fourth one, we need to multiply them. So, negative 3 times 43.43. We have negative 130.29. Okay? So, just do the rest. Then, after that, of course, we need the summation. So, summation of all the x minus x bar squared 
we have 28. Then summation of all the square of y minus y bar, we have one uh, 15,183.7. And for the last, the summation of the product of the two, we have negative 3.0. Now that we have solved for these values, we can substitute them in this equation to solve for r. So, yan. Let's just substitute for the numerator, negative 3.0, then all, all over the square root of 28 times 15,183.7. So, our r is equal to negative 0 0.0046, and that means there is little to no correlation. So, practical implication, if we will go back to the data that we have, so there is no evidence that there is a relationship between the days you are selling to the sales. Yeah, so that's how you do the computation for the correlation and how you do the interpretation. Okay, so you just only have to refer to the table, okay, the table a while ago to see the meaning or the interpretation of the R value. Okay, so if we will try to graph the data on the table, okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, so for day 1, we have 220, and for day 2, 27. So as you can see, the, uh, the more the dot value goes nearer the slope, so this is the slope or the stiffness of the line, so the more the two variables is correlated. So since the dots or the points when plotted in this graph are far from each other, Okay, it uh, it only shows that the correlation, okay, just like what we have uh, got from the uh, computation, it has little to no uh, correlation at all. Okay, yeah. So that's uh, no, an application of the scatter diagram and uh, correlation. Now, how to determine the slope? Okay, so we have here some data. For x, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, uh, 4, 5. Then this is the mean. Then for y, we have 2, 4, 5, 4, 5. Then, n the rest of the table. So if we will graph this data, we have this graph on the example 2. So to determine this two. First, you need to determine the mean of x and y value, which is our red line. Okay, so our mean is 3 and 4. So it is plotted here for the horizontal and the vertical line. So after that, we need to know the linear equation, which is y is equal to mx plus b. And to... To further explain this, I will uh, create another video, okay, and the linear regression. So, we will discuss this on the next video. Another example. So, the local ice cream shop keeps track of how much ice cream they sell versus the temperature on that day. So, here are the figures for the last 12 days and so ice cream sales versus temperature so the first variable here is the temperature in degrees celsius and the ice cream sales in dollars so if we will um, repeat or do the process we have a while ago so we will have this table here okay you can oh no you can compute it or you can pause the video and then ano, um, try to compare if your answer is the same as what I have flashed here. Okay. So computing for the 
R or the correlation coefficient, so we have 5,325.03 divided by the square root of 176.98 times 174,754.92. So our R here is equal to 0 0.9575 and it is a very high positive correlation. So if we will go back to the problem, its practical implication is that there is an evidence that there is a relationship between the temperature and sales of their ice cream. So if we will graph the data, so here is the scatter diagram for that. So on the horizontal axis, we have the temperature. The vertical axis, we have the sales. And as you can see, Okay, the dots or the points here are near the line. So as per a conclusion, we can say that the higher the temperature, the more the sales of the ice cream shop. Okay, so that's how you do um, the scatter diagram and the interpretation for the correlation. So I hope you have learned a lot from this video. See you next topic.